Hi, my name is Samir Loda. I'm one of the orthopedic hand surgeons at Panorama Orthopedics. I'm just going to talk a little bit to you about distal biceps tendon ruptures. So most people know the biceps is the one of the big muscles in the upper arm that helps to flex the elbow. Um, it has two attachment sites. One's at the, up at the level of the shoulder, and then the other one is at the level of the forearm. And in doing that, it crosses the entire arm and allows you to flex at the elbow. Now, unfortunately, in, oftentimes in middle-aged men, certain activities put that distal attachment under a fair amount of strain and can, in certain cases, result in a rupture of that attachment. When that ruptures, you've lost one of the anchors of the muscle, which results in significant weakness in two main functions of the arm, elbow flexion and what's called supination, or the act of turning your palm upwards. There's a couple of interesting things about distal biceps tendon ruptures. They're incredibly rare in women, so in general, uh, women are at much lower risk for developing this injury. In terms of how to prevent this, I do think that a, uh, establishing a continuing sort of general level of health and fitness is very important, um, and avoiding sort of uh, the weekend warrior type phenomenon where you suddenly become very active in intermittent bouts uh, that puts a lot of strain on your muscles that are not used to it and can often result in injuries of this type. Stretching and strengthening type of programs are very useful in preventing this kind of injury. So biceps tendon ruptures generally present in fairly dramatic fashion. People will be lifting something heavy and they'll hear a pop and have a sudden significant pain in the elbow. It can often be accompanied by a significant bruising as well as the development of what's called a Popeye deformity, which is where the muscle retracts up the arm and forms a bulge on the upper part of the arm. There are two main ways in which distal biceps tendon ruptures can be treated. The first way is non-operatively with therapy. Oftentimes this can result in a painless upper extremity uh, with good function. Almost inevitably, non-operative treatment will, however, result in some weakness, especially in, like I said, flexion as well as that supination type maneuver. The only way to restore strength or to hope to restore strength back to the original or to the pre-injury status is through operatively repairing the tendon. There are two main ways in which we can repair the tendon. One is through an anterior incision or an incision on the front of the arm where we find the tendon that's retracted, bring it back down to where it's supposed to insert and reattach it to the bone. The other is through a small incision in the front and a small incision in the back, essentially doing the same thing but with slightly different technical details. While the surgery itself is fairly straightforward and the immediate recovery is fairly uh, reasonable, the overall recovery from the tendon repair is fairly prolonged. It takes about six weeks of just working on range of motion and ensuring that the tendon is healing back to the bone, and then an additional six weeks of working with strengthening with therapy to ensure that the tendon is back to a position where we would allow it to experience normal loads without having a substantial risk of re-rupturing it. So overall, I'd expect about three months before I let patients get back to normal activities.